My name is Thomas Milsna. I am a full-time habitat consultant and whitetail hunting coach, and this is how I kill big deer. This is a brief overview and short tutorial on the design behind the planner and how I use it to successfully harvest mature deer on a consistent basis. The idea behind this planner is for you to take the information that you're getting from the field, put it in these charts, put it in these tools, and come up with a good plan so that you can maximize that time in the field and also so you can figure out how your property hunts best and how to prepare your property for years to come and just keep that information, keep track of it over the years so you can look back, reference it, create plans, use those plans, improve those plans, and just keep on adjusting your strategy as needed. We open up this planner. On the first page, you're gonna see the title page here. Turn the page, you're gonna see the table of contents and a glossary. Now the glossary is just to make sure that words that you read inside here mean the same to you as they mean to me. If you're a new hunter, some of these words might be completely new to you. Keep going, there's a spot to populate your personal information, uh, emergency contact info, medical info. And then we have a yearly overview, so you can look at the, the calendar as a whole. We've got a holiday list. And the next page, we have hunting holidays. Now this is designed for you to put in season dates, deadlines, um, you know, even down to important dates where that you think are going to be a factor this fall. There's also a spot in here for other important dates, anniversaries, birthdays. These are important. Keep your family happy. You're going to be happy. You're going to hunt more. Life is just that much better. Brief introduction on my background and how my business and this planner came to be. And then it rolls into kind of a Cliff Notes version of my four key elements. Everything that I do when it comes to creating a plan to hunt or a plan to design a property is dictated by these four key elements and how they interact with each other. Next is goals. So what I want you to do is take a look back and look at some things that you would have done differently. We want to address some things that happened in the past and how we can adjust them moving forward. And then the most important part is set goals moving forward. Set short-term goals and set long-term goals. Set goals for your property if you have a property that you can manage and try to break them down into things that you can do this year on the short-term basis and things that take time to develop. Next page here is a community contacts list. If you and your neighbors have good communication, you create common goals, everyone is in a better situation for success. At its core, this is an annual planner and daily scheduler. It runs from April 1st to March 31st of the next year, the same as the annual cycle of the white-tailed deer. The beginning of each month has a full calendar view for the month, along with a monthly checklist. The idea behind that is to look at that checklist. Maybe you want to add your own stuff there. There's a portion for notes. But look at that checklist and start thinking about when you're going to accomplish those tasks. Take those tasks, add them to a date, and check them off your list. This is designed to make sure that you're staying on top of these more timely events and chores as the season progresses. When we get to the daily schedule, you're going to notice that there's an area to populate the forecast. Take a couple minutes every week, pull up your favorite weather app, and populate the daily wind direction, wind speed, the high temp, the low temp, and barometric pressure, and whether that pressure is rising or falling. By writing that information down, you're going to remember it. Outside of season, you're going to start to recognize that a lot of this mature buck activity you're getting on your cell cameras or on those cards you're pulling from your trail cams is directly related to these changes in the weather. Once we get into season and you start populating that weather information, 
you're going to start to recognize these changes in advance. And all of a sudden you'll be like, hey, there's a pretty big temp drop between Thursday and Friday or a dramatic wind shift from Wednesday to Thursday. That's the day you need to be in the woods. If those conditions meet the conditions you're looking for based on the other information that you're collecting, that's the day you need to be in the woods. Also on the daily schedules, you're going to notice an ambition checklist. This is accountability. You need to make sure you're working out, doing some sort of exercise and practicing weapon proficiency as much as you possibly can. When that opportunity comes up, you need to be prepared and part of that is being physically ready and being proficient with your weapon. Once we get into season, starting September 1st, you're going to notice additional space for journaling and additional notes that you might want to take and keep track of throughout the season. We go to the back of the planner and you're going to find all the tools and charts back there. Now the first thing you're going to see is the postseason debrief. This is meant to be used after season but can certainly be filled out throughout the year. It gives you an area to populate your harvest records so you can keep track of all the animals that you've taken off of your property and what the neighbors have taken out of the area. There's a page here for your hit list or your target list so you can keep track of those animals keep track of your goals. There's a page for trail camera inventory, so you can keep track of all your trail cameras. They're a very valuable scouting tool. Even the best cameras out there will fail from time to time, so I want to make sure that I know the date I purchased them, the serial numbers, and if I have problems with those cameras, a lot of times I'll let cameras soak in areas. I'm not going to put a camera in an area and let it soak for a year if I don't have confidence that it's going to be running when I go to check it. The next few pages are the trail camera tracker. This is to keep track of when you check your cameras, what the battery status was, the card status, and any notes on adjustment. If you check the pictures on that card and you notice that the camera's aimed a little high, a little low, maybe there's a branch that needs to be trimmed, enter those notes in there and then revisit those notes before you go check that camera again so that you're prepared. The idea here is that you're spending as little time as possible in these areas where you have the cameras because the more time you're there, the less time those mature bucks are going to be there. Keep going to the pattern tracker portion. Now this pattern tracker is probably one of the most useful tools and how I've killed most of my deer. You can use the pattern tracker tool in two ways. As you're collecting trail camera information from bucks throughout the year, or if you have a buck that you've been following through the years, you can go back through your trail camera history and grab this information. But you want to log the date and the time and the location of when that animal was in that area. And then once you get enough information, you can go back and look at the weather history and populate what the wind was doing that morning, and what the wind was doing that evening, and any other notes that you might want to add. By entering that information, you're going to be surprised to find that a lot of times certain bucks only use certain areas based on certain wind directions. When it comes to targeting specific deer or trying to pattern them, you want to make sure that you're hunting that deer under the conditions that he prefers to be in that area. Not what's safe for you, but what he prefers. Then the next step is figuring out where you can set up to kill him without him catching your wind. The other way you can use the pattern tracker tool is by looking at a specific location and logging all the mature buck activity by time and date and wind direction on that location. What you're going to find with that is that oftentimes specific locations will have an increased amount of activity during the same three to five day window every single year. If you don't have a large property or you haven't been tracking specific bucks, this is how you plan your rutcation or your rut vacation by figuring out when the most activity happens on your property and in a specific location that you can hunt. After that, we get to the pressure notes field. This is where you log any sort of pressure that you recognize on your property or in the surrounding area. If you see dogs running around on your property, write it down. If the neighbor's out cutting wood, if the farmer's checking fences, if your cousin's up driving his ATV around, write that stuff down. You can always go back to it later and look at the wind direction, but write down the time, the date, the location, and any notes that you can. And eventually you're going to see trail camera pictures that don't make sense that you can correlate to this information. When you start understanding how mature bucks operate based on the pressure on your property, you're going to start to understand a lot more about how mature bucks operate in your property in general. 
The next page is where you can list out all your stand locations just to keep inventory. Um, this is especially helpful if you have more than one person hunting the property and maybe that other person doesn't know where all the stands are. This is designed to keep everyone on the same page and it just gives you a good reference to go back to when you're trying to create a plan to hunt on a shorter timeline. Then we get to the food plot summary page. This is where you keep track of all your information on your food plots. Plot number, plot location, the approximate size, what you planted there, what the soil pH was during the last soil test, and is it an annual or a perennial, and the date that you planted it. After the food plot summary, the next few pages are the food source tracker. This is where you jot down the information on food sources on your property and surrounding area. Modifications that you made to your food plots, when you sprayed them, when you mowed them, etc different food sources that you've scouted while you're on the property or in the area, different crop rotations. This is all so you can go back and reference it, whether you're creating a short-term plan to hunt or you wanna look back and reference why movement was the way it was that particular year. And that's it. There's a couple pages, a couple additional pages for notes if you wanna jot that stuff down. And then lastly, once you use this planner, I would really appreciate some feedback. Again, this is a tool that I created to help me and my clients and anyone else out there who's looking to be more organized and come up with better plans. And if you found it to be very helpful, I'd love to hear some feedback. If there's anything that you'd like added to the planner or things that you didn't find useful, maybe they didn't make much sense to you, let me know. I'm always looking to improve. I'm always trying to become a better hunter and I'm hoping that you can become a better hunter too. I've worked in the outdoor industry for over 10 years now, uh, dealing with customers and clients. And one big thing that I've noticed is a lot of people's lack of success is directly related to their lack of planning and organization. And that's exactly what this planner is designed to help with. This is a simple tool. And a little disclaimer here, you're gonna get back what you put into it. Thanks for watching. I hope this is a useful tool for you. I know it has been for me over the years. If you have any questions on it, feedback, comments, concerns, anything that doesn't make sense, or if you just want a little bit extra help trying to get dialed in on your property, please reach out and contact me. That's what I'm here for. Hunt smart, hunt safe, have fun with the process, and remember, when it comes to mature bucks, wind is king. Thanks for watching. You mother <clears throat> use the planner to be successful. deer like that.